Um, some of you know me, some of you don't. I'll do a few more scientists, experts, in our case, consultants. Um, so they recognize the types of problems that Transmart can solve, and also a little bit to our business, so that's something that we can solve in a way that scales up our clients. So, <coughs> a picture of July. This would work. Um, I think you can click on the slides because I think there are two meetings in the front. Am I like on the road? No, you should be good. It's not like proceeding. I can also walk over there. No, that's the same one. Markers we've all been thinking about is just pure molecular markers. Might not be the markers we're looking at in the future. Of healthcare data can help identify comparative effectiveness, but haven't specifically focused on biomarkers as a starting point. B2. And so I don't know how many of you have played with like a B2 versus Transmark, but you will know that there's a difference today in API of what I2B2 can do for its precision queries versus Transmark. And so we built a tool that allows them to select a cohort of I2B2 and then push it to either Transmart or push it into um, I2B2 Transmart, push it into our cohort viewers in QuickView. And so to give you a, a simple idea of how it works is if you were to pick that all patients in your mouth and open it up in I2B2, I'm not going to go through the whole workflow for you guys. But it would do a selection from 60,000, a million, two million patients down to a smaller subset and then save those subsets as cohorts that you can then use in the API today in 102, because there's no way to do such a thing in the API. But we push the data in, we can then run a query. Once we're on the query, we can save the subset in Transmart. Once we save the subset, it'll appear in the subset many times to be able to bring it into where is my age, gender, race, ethnicity, pull this information back and forth in these kinds of workflows. Any questions so far? Um, but as a result, we really had a, a big funnel gap, which is we didn't have federal people who had a clue what Transmart was. And so what we spent a good chunk of last year on was building out the training and knowledge management to bring folks who had generally been doing project consulting and a little bit of scientific consulting to be in a position to talk about and deliver solutions in this framework. And so we ended up giving them three layers of training as a group. The first layer of training was to be able to just understand what is data curation, how to use Transmart for people who want to understand the back end, how to bring information in. The next, which is probably doing consulting from the business side and the scientific side outside of the pure technical framework. Um, but then again, we do also show off in our CBT um, some of those tools of how the architecture is built out, how we deploy things, how we deploy that. Okay, yeah, so how the, uh, the workflow is, you, you can see a familiar transform workflow in there. And this was all built out with the ability to have the, the call-outs and the click view, so it's not training, it's not that they're just watching video. They click on the screen and the screen just like in a normal CBT and it does some dynamic views. And so our, our training to date has been getting about 75 practitioners fully trained on this. Um, you can see there's a broad mix of the group with the bulk of people, even though it's in federal having a big background in life sciences. Um, and 44% you know, of them have you know, two to five years worth of experience. The was, this would be a good thing to study using a tool like Transmart. Because they could load both the clinical data sets from all the historical studies, and they could solve some of the functional problems they had in terms of working against their uh, gaps in what they can do. I mean, we're talking here about kind of hypotheses along the lines of, is there an epigenetic effect between a mother and a child is exposed, having a resistance to having that kind of reaction in terms of their immune system having a strong reaction to the disease. So the scientific users came up with the following big use cases that they're interested in solving for with the tool. Um, and see if the people who were still recurring in 1992, because a lot of what they found was the same people were there. So we put in Transmart, loaded Beatrice, nine field studies, the lab data in lab volume and be able to plot it over time to get the um, We also put in the capacity because of this need to get in 
patients from multiple studies, the incremental data loader rather than a bulk data loader. So if a patient has new data, they can flow the data over the existing data set. And it's a tool that they can use on their side as the researchers to pull that data set and put it back. And so we did the work to look at some of these functions and took the architecture, which is here, which is data set explorer, everything in R server running externally, through a, a big data box, which is this Ateza box, which has this nice little trick, which we probably don't have time to get into, which is a build SQL into that PDA. Um, and then also they built R into the FPDA and ported in Transmark 1.1. This is a little while ago we haven't gotten back to 1.2. Um, and essentially built out support for SNP, DCF, mRNA, and GWAS results in the tool, along with a lot of the R functions and some of the kettle loading code to be able to operationalize loading data faster. And so there is an available 1.1 port, not a 1.2 port yet. Maybe a little more to deal with all the testing we just scale genomics projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.